Cybersecurity is not an entry level field. There are a set of foundational materials and, and kind of a basis of knowledge that you have to learn before you even enter the industry or get your foot in the door of cybersecurity. Many people really find this kind of as an unsurmountable obstacle or it's something that deters them from entering the field. That's not what I wanna get at by, by saying that cybersecurity is not an entry level field. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the, the requirements and the foundational knowledge that you need to have before getting into cybersecurity. If you're new to this channel, my name is Colin. I run this YouTube channel and cybercareerschools.com. My main goal is to inform and educate aspiring cybersecurity professionals. One thing that I do want to establish before I really get into the meat of this video is that there is no set path to get into cybersecurity. There's no roadmap that that's cleanly lays out that you need, to ident you need to hit this one step in month one, hit this one step in month two. It's just not that simple in cybersecurity. There are a general set of foundational materials that you need to understand, and that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. But I just wanted to let you know that there, there really is no magic bullet or there is no, no course that you can buy that, that's gonna tell you every single thing that you need to learn before you get into cybersecurity. It's, it's more just, developing this, this foundational knowledge because as cybersecurity professionals, we really are jack of all trades. And you're gonna see that with the material that we're gonna be covering in this video. We're gonna be starting off this list with a couple of skills that are actually not technical. And I know you clicked on this video thinking that there, oh, it was gonna be all technical, like programming, networking, all these. We're gonna be getting to that later in the video, but I think it's really, really important to stress these, these soft skills and these non-technical attributes that you must possess to really do well in cybersecurity. The first one that we're gonna be talking about is that you have to have a genuine interest for cybersecurity. I say this a lot, and it is true. In cybersecurity, it's unlike a lot of other fields where you kind of just show up to work every single day and go through the motions. Cybersecurity requires continuous learning. Most positions are gonna tell you that you need to be pursuing a certification uh, most of the time. You might get a small break in between certifications, but for me, for example, I finish one certification, I take a small break, and then I start going for another one. And in addition to that, I'm doing my own outside research, and I'm just really passionate about the field, so this stuff all just comes naturally to me. Uh, so take that as a bit of an example for yourself, and it's, it's really a committed field, so you need, to, you need to have this genuine interest to excel in this field. Next, we're gonna be talking about communication. Communication is an extremely important attribute to have before getting into cybersecurity. Most of the functions that you're gonna have as a cybersecurity professional are gonna be team-based. You really need to know how to interact with a team, communicate, uh, communicate what's going well, communicate what's not going well, uh, be able to communicate your findings with, with higher level people, potentially C-level people. And that's something that's very interesting about cybersecurity. I cannot stress enough how important communication is in cybersecurity. As a, even a beginner analyst, you might have the opportunity to, to even speak with, with someone extremely high up, like the chief information security officer of your company. So being able to do two, two methods of communication. Technical communication to your team members is very important, but also uh, managerial communication and, and communicating your findings and results with C-level uh, executives is very important in cybersecurity. I hinted on this before, but you really need to have solid work habits established before getting into cybersecurity. Now, this is not a hard prerequisite by any means. I think that if you enter the field with a passion, uh, you'll develop these work habits if you do not possess them already. But I just wanted to emphasize the fact that, that this continuous learning really does require a lot of work. And cybersecurity industry is really a lot more involved uh, than, a lot more, than a lot of other industries. Now, it really depends on the position, and don't let this be something that deters you, but just, just comparing this to other jobs where they just clock out at five o'clock and they're done for the day and they don't have to think about it until 8 a.m. Cybersecurity definitely is more involved. You're gonna be doing this studying. Uh, you might have to jump on an incident response. So you just have to be, uh, you have to have a good work, work ethic and willing to put in the time. I promise this is the last one of the soft skills that we're gonna be talking about today. After this, we're gonna be getting into the technical, the nitty gritty details that you need to know for cybersecurity. But the last one we're gonna be talking about today is you need to be able to learn and act on on the fly. This is incredibly important in cybersecurity. 
And this is also a benefit of the industry because you go to work and you're not doing the same thing every single day. There are a lot of times where, and this also will contribute to your growth in the field, where you just get thrown into something and you really have to, you have to learn, you learn a lot about yourself and you learn about your ability to act on the fly, respond to questions on the fly, and, and really just be a team member when, when it is crunch time. So you have to be really open to this and, and you have to be not very set and really focused on, on your ways. If, if you're trying to just go to work and clock in at eight, go out at five, do the same thing every single day, cybersecurity might not be right for you. But if, the, if it sounds exciting that you have the potential of getting thrown into an incident response or um, getting thrown into a penetration test and just taking in all the information, acting on the fly, that, that's where you really learn and that's one of the awesome parts about cybersecurity. But just circling back on this, you really just wanna be able to uh, act and learn on the fly. Time for the technical skills. And the first one that we're gonna be talking about is basic computer skills. And this might sound extremely obvious, but it, the industry of cybersecurity does, does require that you have a pretty good understanding of at least the basic fundamental uh, computer skills. If that's something that you might not be very confident about, I would suggest looking into the a certification. You don't even have to take the a certification and, and actually go through the exam, but you could really um, just go on to something like Pluralsight. You could watch an a course. I can link one of those in the description. Um, I can also put a book that is an A-plus certification book, and just run through these different objectives. Like I said before, you don't have to take the actual exam, you don't, that, that's another additional amount of money, uh, but just make sure you're familiar with these concepts. The A-plus really sums it up well and, and sets you up well for understanding the basic security implications of these basic uh, computer concepts. Next, we are going to be talking about the number one biggest skill that you must possess before entering the field of cybersecurity, and that is networking. Networking, networking, networking. Networking is everything. You're gonna hear me say it a million times in this video, and I'm sorry about that, but it, I have to stress how important networking is for cybersecurity, because pretty much Everything that you're gonna be doing on a day-to-day -day basis um, is going to be dealing with networking. If you're a penetration tester, you need to understand it extremely in depth the ins and outs of networking uh, to understand some workarounds, to understand the tools that you're using. Um, if you are on the blue team side of things, you really, really have to understand networking because you're gonna be getting alerts or you're gonna to have to be doing engineering that are related to network vulnerabilities. So. Um, a, good, a really good place to start with networking is to take the networking plus. Kind of like I said with the A plus is you don't even have to take the certification. So personally, uh, way back when I was getting into uh, networking and I was not very confident in networking, I bought a network plus book and I went through the entire book. I read it. I just didn't take the exam. Um, I just wanted to use the book and the course material as kind of a foundation for myself, but I knew that I was, I was generally uh, familiar with the concept, so it was more of a review just to make sure I had everything. If that sounds like a good route for you, um, consider trying to take something like a Pluralsight Network Plus course, or uh, you can get the Network Plus study guide on Amazon. I'm gonna include both of those in the description as well, just as a good place for you to get started. I also have a, a couple of Network Plus and, and networking related articles over at Cyber Career School. Uh, we have an entire category of blog posts related to that, so check that out. The next technical skill that we're gonna be talking about is programming. And you do not have to be an expert programmer, you do not have to have a computer science degree, and you do not have to be developing full-scale applications. All I'm saying here is that an introductory level of programming. So you really need to understand the ins and outs of programming, how it works on a basic level. Um, you don't even really need to be proficient in a single language. You just need to, to understand these basic concepts because you're gonna be working with, depending on the role you're in, you're gonna be working with some various tools and you might have to make some slight modifications to those tools to meet your specific business needs. And also just understanding how to approach pro, uh, problems with a programming or programmatic mindset is extremely useful in cybersecurity. Next, we're gonna be talking about Linux. Linux is extremely important in cybersecurity as well. Uh, understanding the Linux operating system and being able to just at least navigate around Linux and be able to use some Linux specific tools 
I can pretty much guarantee you that at some point in your cybersecurity career, pretty early on, uh, you're going to be introduced to Linux and you're going to be kind of thrown into it. So I would say that just becoming familiar with the operating system, um, just be, become familiar with the distribution uh, like Kali Linux, and, and that will go a very long way for you. So a good way to do this is to uh, just get a virtual machine, set up Linux. I have a video on how to set up Kali Linux in a virtual machine, um, but there are also lots of other videos out there that can be very helpful, helpful for you as well. So if you already have a Linux distribution set up in a virtual machine or you already have a laptop dual booted, uh, you might not know where to go from that because I, I clearly remember when I was first introduced to Linux, all I knew was basically LS and CD and I would just type LS, CD, LS, CD, whatever into different directories and I thought I was so cool. Um, if you're looking for some more commands, I have a very in-depth video um, on the top 25 Linux commands that I use on a daily basis. I'm gonna put that in one of the cards right here. The last thing that I'm gonna say here before we move on to how you're actually gonna go about acquiring these skills is that cybersecurity professionals are jacks of all trades. They really need to understand a lot of different aspects. So that's why something like the Security Plus exam it covers so many domains. It's, it's really a mile wide and an inch deep. And, and that's for a reason, because it, get, it gives you familiarity with all these different domains and how they apply to cybersecurity. So that's just something you wanna keep in the back of your mind is that pretty much any technical information that you're gonna be learning about computers, about networking, about programming, any of this information is gonna be valuable. So keep that stored in the back of your head because I can pretty much guarantee you that you're gonna call upon that at some time. So now let's talk about some of the ways that you can go about acquiring some of these entry level or foundational cybersecurity skills to get you ready for a career in the field. The first thing that you can do to really get some hands-on experience is to set up a home lab. A home lab will go a very long way, all the way from just learning your skills to also being a great topic of discussion in the interview process. Recruiters and, and managers, technical managers, obviously they love to talk about your home lab. Uh, if you can speak to that in great detail, that will go a very long way. But let's talk about some of the things that you can actually learn from home labs. So you're gonna learn, again, networking, and it's just, a, it's just a place where you can really experiment. It's not a big deal if something breaks. Um, you're not, for example, working in an industry where you're working on critical systems. Uh, if you set up a domain controller in your home lab and it breaks, it's not gonna catastrophically impact the company. So it's just a really nice place and it's very fun to just mess around with, with these different um, network hardware and these different, diff different concepts uh, in your home lab. Now there's a lot of different ways to set up a home lab. Uh, I'm in the process of creating a, a video series on setting up a home lab in AWS. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be a really, really good one uh, for you to follow along. My goal with that is to have everyone follow along and by the end we'll have a pretty standard image for a home lab and we're gonna be able to uh, discuss all of the different security implications in that home lab. Next, we're gonna be talking about certifications. I know that I talk about certifications a lot on this channel, but they are a very good way to get a foundational level of knowledge over a certain concept, and then to be able to just display this level of knowledge to get your interview, um, to get your resume read by, and, and, and just even just to get it past the first level of HR review. So it's just a good way to justify and, and, and establish the fact that you have a skill in a certain area. I mentioned it before in this video, but the Security Plus is a great place to start. Next, we're gonna be talking about CTFs, which are capture the flags, and then also some other online challenges. So some places that I would recommend you starting out with were if you're trying to learn Linux, I would start out with doing um, Over the Wire. Over the Wire is a number of Linux-based challenges. They're gonna really get you comfortable with learning the ins and the outs. I would suggest doing that after having a little bit of a basic introduction to Linux. So check out my video on the top 25 Linux commands and then go over to the Over the Wire and go through, I believe they have about uh, 25 levels and then they have some intermediate and advanced categories as well. 
a great resource to really practice your skills if you are looking to be on the offensive security side of things is Hack the Box or Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me is a newer platform that is really gaining traction and it is really exciting to see other YouTubers um, going through and doing their walkthroughs on the boxes. I, and I really enjoy uh, personally getting my hands-on experience in Hack the Box just to, if you're not familiar with Hack the Box, so Hack the Box, uh, you download a VPN configuration file and then you use OpenVPN and you get onto a network. And on this network, there's about uh, 20 active boxes at, at one time. And you can choose which one uh, you're looking to, to capture the flag on. And so there's either, you either capture the flag and then you also uh, try to get root. This is, th there's, there's really no, no comparison out there for the experience that you can get with this. One thing that I have to mention here is all three of those resources are free. There really is no better training for free like that. So go check out these three resources. So that's what I'm gonna leave you on today. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you next time.